Welcome back to another video. Just some motivation for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we'll be diving into another Bible study. We'll be discussing John chapter 13, verses 1 through 20. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me, and then the closing prayer will be by Brother Jave. If you guys can, just bow your heads and close your eyes. Let's for God so we can get into prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice in beginning, God. I pray today that today that we come together, God, today. I pray that iron will be able to sharpen iron, God. I pray that we'll be able to discuss your word and be able to help each other understand the word more, God. We pray that you'll be able to instill a better understanding of the word into us, God. We pray that the viewers will be able to have a better understanding of your word too, God. We pray that we'll be able to just come together and just discuss your word and enjoy ourselves and learning your word too, God. In Jesus, in your holy name, amen. Amen. John chapter 13. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. So just those are a few opening verses. What's your takeaway from that? Jesus knew his time was coming. Um, and it was time for the, the Last Supper. Last Supper is where he announced that one of them is going to betray them. Everybody was like, what? Who who going to betray you? Judas knew he was going to betray him. He acted right. like him. Uh, right. And... Um, Jesus knew that he was going to be returned to God right after he died on the cross, resurrect again. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, you could say this part is like a ceremonial where he gets down and washes their feet. Uh, I know there's a, a, a higher meaning, some type of symbol that that represents. I don't really know what. Mm. Yeah, in Jewish culture, um, it was a daily routine and a, a, a gesture of hospitality. So remember, they, they wore sandals back then, right? They didn't have no Jordans or no ACGs, no boots or nothing like that. So they wore sandals and there was dirt roads. Well, the walking they did and wherever they traveled, obviously, their feet were dirty. So not only was it a daily routine, but it was a gesture of hospitality. When Jesus began to wash the disciples' feet, he took the posture um, of a servant. And that's exactly what he came to do, right? The Bible says he came um, not to be served, but to serve. And here he, again, models uh, servanthood, right? And he is the ultimate servant. Man. Um, he did a task that was reserved uh, for servants, no servants. But here again, we see Jesus really just being super humble, right? Not about his position, not about him being uh, the Messiah, uh, but serving his people, right? Um, I think this also paints a perfect picture for us as well, right? That if we're truly uh, to lead, then we have to follow Jesus' example. Jesus' model for leadership is servant leadership, right? That means putting your people first, taking care of your people, um, doing what may seem as the lowest task, Jesus did it. Okay? So in present day in the church, what, what does that look like? Um, we can't be so high and mighty that we can't pick up a piece of paper on the floor if we see a piece of paper on the floor, right? Just because Ezra, you, you're the youth leader and the youth pastor, you're not too high to pick up a piece of paper on the floor, right? Um, some the young people they need to ride home. Oh, no, I'm the youth pastor. I'm Ezra. I, I can't. I just preach. I uh, can't take care of them. Find your own way home. 
Um, so present day, same same thing, right? We have to find opportunities where we're really serving our people, the people that God has entrusted in our care. Right? So Jesus is again the perfect example. Right? And I like that because he came to serve, but he also came to be a leader. Because um, with leadership, you have to lead and also serve. And that's one thing that I've learned um, with the position of God has placed in me. And I'm leading, but I'm also serving because it's a lot of stuff I don't know about preaching yet. It's a lot of mm-hmm. stuff I learn about preaching. I got to learn about motivation. I got to learn about making videos. Uh, I don't know everything, but I'm in the process. Even though I have a leadership position, I'm going to say, I'm going to look after, um, look up at Javi when he preaching and taking those like, you know what? Ooh, let me add that. Let me incorporate that into my stuff. If Gio is doing it, ooh, I like that. Let me incorporate that into my stuff. So I'm very, um, I pay attention to the, um, the leaders or the people that I I see as leaders or have a close relationship. I pay attention to what they're doing because um, I know they're good to emulate. Yeah, yeah. I think it's always good to have someone to look up to. Um, and, and obviously trust God in the process or that God will lead you. Um, I think I have a book on preaching that I can give to you, like young preachers coming up. Um, sidebar. While you, you look up to me, Gio, and you know, other preachers and, and pastors and everything, uh, just be careful what you emulate, right? Sometimes, which is something the book said, sometimes we, we pick up the mistakes or the bad habits. And though it may look good, it, it's really not good, right? So um, just be careful what it is you know, that, that we, you emulate. Um, even we, we mess up sometimes. Right, so we want you to pick up the good traits and not necessarily um, the bad one. But that's another conversation for another time. We can talk more about that. All right. All right, cool. So that was verses one through five. All right. So um, we already know about by Judas, right? He's a yes. traitor. We already know what's going to happen with him um, and what he has planned uh, with the Pharisees. Judas to me represent like um how a lot of people but Jesus knew but um for us we wouldn't know that I, I think that represent how a lot of people keep people in their circle that's not loyal to them that's mm-hmm. gonna betray them it's just so when I'm thinking about that right now it's like you really gotta watch who you keep around you Jesus obviously knew Judas being there that that was supposed to happen but right. it also made me think like you gotta keep you gotta watch who you keep around you. Not everybody is loyal to you and want to see you, man. Uh, that's absolutely true, bro. I'm glad you brought up that point. Um, that's tough sometimes to tell, right? Um, to spot out who is who. That's why we must continually evaluate our connection to people that we're connected to, right? Our friends, our, our whole close circles. See, they're really for you, right? And sometimes, like I said, it's, it's hard to tell. A lot of people just want to profit up, profit from you and have nothing to give you in return. But constantly, we have to evaluate our connections, evaluate our circle. And me personally, I don't, since high school, I don't keep a, a large group of, of friends per se, right? I have a very, very tight-knit circle of people that I know that are really for me, right? Um, and even, you know, sometimes too, you, you continually evaluate Verse 6, when Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I am doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never, ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and head as well, Lord, not just my feet. I think right there, just just picture, have you ever participated in the feet washing service in church? You mean like wash people's feet or got my feet washed? I mean, it should be both. Oh, no, neither. I haven't done neither. No? Uh, <clears throat> I think it's something that you should do, bro. Uh, whenever, if you have to do it. I know we don't, we probably don't do it as much anymore. 
But at, at first, I was like, you yeah, I'm not doing this. Bro. I'm not doing this. But yeah, it, it's really a humbling, it's really a humbling uh, it's a form of service, right? It really uh, puts you in the mind of Christ in terms of being a servant, right? Um, so you're thinking, I want to watch somebody feet, they feet nasty, you know, their toes is looking crazy. Uh, but it really, it really does put you in, in a humble state, bro. Like, Jesus did this, he set this example. So I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this example, right? So if they ever have it, I know it won't be anytime soon because of COVID. But you should participate. But if not, I'm gonna invite you to my church. And I'm gonna wash your feet. You gonna wash my feet? You know what? I'll do it. I'll do it. As much it's not it's not had nothing, it got nothing to do with people. I just I'm just I don't really just I don't like feet like that. I don't like yeah. looking at my own feet, much of somebody else's. So it's not, it's not it having nothing to do with people. It's just, I just don't like feet. But because I know it's sacred to my religion, I'll do it. But, but look, think, think about like Peter. Now, Peter, you know, comes into the scene and he's like, yo, Jesus, what you doing, bro? Why are you doing this? Right? This is reserved for low servants. What are you, what are you doing? That's, that's what's going through Peter's mind, right? Like, think about, you know, you're, you're running with your master, right? And he's the one now washing feet. A job reserved for a slave or for a low servant. Like, think about what's going through Peter's head. So that's why he's like, yo, Jesus, uh, what, you, what, what are you doing? Right? Um, but a true leader, a true leader is able to serve, and do the lowest task, and do the task of others even below him. Again, here with Jesus is um, representing what it means to be a true leader. Right? What's your take from this? Uh, statement that I said before: in order to be a leader, you gotta serve. And even though Jesus was leading and he was a perfect example of a leader, he said be sure he served. Um, mm -hmm. His disciple didn't really understand too much, but if, if Jesus is not gonna understand a lot until later. Uh, everything else is going to make sense. Uh, like Jesus said, that it's going to make sense to you later on. Not, it's not going to make sense now, but it's going to make sense to you later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's also um, a, a testament to how we should treat people below us. Right? Again, not because we are in a position of leadership or we have some power or, you know, we're higher than people don't mean we can't come down to them and serve them, right? So, it's also a testament to how we should treat people. Um, here's another uh, point from our study Bible. It says, based on the depth of, of his devotion to Jesus, it is understandable that Peter protested. But Jesus was not simply giving Peter a model of service. This was a symbolic pre-enactment of his greater act of sacrifice on the cross. Receiving Jesus' spiritual cleansing is a condition for discipleship. So if Peter could not accept this act, he could not be Jesus's disciple at all. Okay. And two things in uh, Jesus saying to Peter, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. First one on that, unless he washed away Peter's sins by the death on the cross, then Peter could not have a relationship with him. Okay. Two, Unless Peter submitted to him and allowed Jesus to minister in this way, Peter would have never learned the lesson of humility, right? So we said that in the beginning, um, that this was the perfect uh, uh, lesson of, of how to be humble, even as a leader, right? That even as a leader in position, we have to humble ourselves. Um, Peter seemed to grasp the significance of Jesus' words, for he then wanted to be bathed completely, which is what get to in the next two verses, right? Um, Peter said, you know, not, don't just do my feet, you know, just do all of me. I want you to cleanse all of me, you know what I mean? Um, so he, did, he still doesn't fully, fully understand what Jesus means, what uh, this s symbolizes, but uh, he's getting there, he's gaining some, some understanding, right? Anything else you want to add? 
Mm-hmm. Taking notes right now. Okay. So verse nine says, Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well, Lord, not just my feet. Jesus replied, person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. So remember you said earlier, Jesus already knew um, what's going to happen with Judas, right? That's why he said some of you uh, are already clean, but not all of you. So obviously he's speaking specifically um, about Jesus, uh, Judas. Right? Um, for Jesus knew who would betray him. This is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. This is interesting that Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed, but still just went through and it alter the plan. Did it throw Judas out? Did it kick him out? Did it call him out? Now, he didn't call him out like Judas, I know he won't betray me. But you think think about Judas, Jesus saying these words, not all of your theme. Um, some of you are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That's why he said, not all of you are clean. Think about how Judas is feeling. Probably wondering to himself. Because he's in this by himself. It's not like he can go to another disciple. And like, yo, you think he know, you think he know what we're doing? Think about what's going through his mind. You think he know? He's probably bugging right now, right? Like, going through it. What should I do? You know, he's probably second-guessing himself. Should I? Should I uh, forget the plan? Should I alter it? What should I do? You know, he's probably wondering, does he know? Does he know? And of course, we know that Jesus knows what's about to happen, but still, he does not alter the plan. He does not change it. He still goes through with it. That's tough. It, it is to me. I'm not at that point in my walk of faith yet where I know you're going to get me killed and I'm not going to have no animosity towards you for that. I'm, I'm not at that point yet. Keyword, yet. Yeah. I'm personally not at that point yet. So I, 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 whew, I'm, I'm just be wondering, like, like how, how you going to have no animosity towards him? It's Jesus. It's Jesus. He can he came to lead and he came to serve. He understood the position that he was in and he understood um, what was going to happen as a result of the position that he was in. And also, yeah. he loved the world. That's why he died for us. He loved every single body in the world, even though he knew somebody was going to betray him and somebody was going to do him wrong, get him killed. He's not going to, I don't know if he felt some, some type of way about that. Regardless if he felt some type of way about that, he went through with the plan and still treat him with the same respect. Yeah. Yeah, I, he different for that. And now two things just came to mind too. It's not like he knew like two days before that Judas was about to betray him. He knew for a minute, right? So he was walking around, serving, preaching, teaching for a for a while, knowing that he's going to be betrayed by one of, his, one of his disciples, and still he was committed to his purpose. And I think that's again another perfect example for us. We are to be committed to our purpose, our God-given purpose, right? Uh, in times of opposition, in times of adversity, we are to be committed to that purpose, right? Trusting God all the way that he has called us for a specific reason, right? And no matter what comes, that God is with us, that God will strengthen us and guide us and see us through. We have to be committed to that, that, that purpose, whatever God has called us to do. Cool. So verse 12, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I, I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, and since I your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. And this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is why we do the feet washing service, right? Because Jesus is telling us, I provide an example for you. Now you should do it. And speaking to your brothers and your sisters, right? So usually when we do it, the ladies will go with the ladies and the men with the men, obviously, right? But here is Jesus, he's telling us, because I did it, you should do it as well. I have given you an example to follow, right? This is what I said earlier. I'm 
do as I have done to you. Right? I tell you the truth, slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing um, Jesus' act of service, such as feet washing and dying on the cross, uh, provided the perfect example of personal sacrifice to follow, which is essentially what we said earlier, right? Feet washing was so, was a common place that Jesus might have intended a literal re repetition of this act, or he might have seen it as symbolic. Either way, Jesus wants similar servanthood and sacrifice um, to characterize his followers. Eventually, as we said earlier, he's giving us the ultimate example to follow, right? We are to continue following the example present day, right? Not just to leave it in biblical times, but present day, he wants us to continue to follow the example. Hey, anything from you? I be learning about God, I, God, Jesus. I just be sitting there like, that man different. <laughs> yeah. I just be sitting there, just be so admired by how type of person he was, uh, and just planned out and just carefully done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even yeah, the result you went through. Yeah. Everything he did was purposeful. Everything and intentional about it. Like the song said, he is, he's intentional. I'm not going to sing it because y'all yeah, yeah, know God ain't blessed me with no single way. But <laughs> um, the song said he's intentional. Mm -hmm. You're feeling all things are working for my good because God is intentional. Yeah, and every, everything he does, does it with intention and it's for a purpose. 18 says, I am not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But this fulfills the scripture that says, the one who eats my food has turned against me. And I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. So again, right, it's the second time that Jesus alludes, you don't say it directly, right? but he alludes to the fact that he knows someone amongst him is betraying him. He, he already knows they, they plot to take him down. Right? Um, the one who eats my food is turned against me. And you imagine, that's what I'm saying. Um, it's not like it was Judas and another disciple. Right? So it's not like they can converse among the, amongst themselves and be like, yo, you think he knows what's, what's the plan? He's in this technically by himself. Yeah, he's partnering with the religious leaders, Pharisees or whatever, right? But as a disciple, he's in this by himself. So I, I, I would imagine maybe the guilt start to eat at him a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's possible, or maybe he's just like, you know, I'm about to get paid, so it's so good. And I don't know how much 30 pieces of silver was during that time. But I'm just imagining how long could that last you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know? I, even present day, if it was 30 million. Hey, present day, that's a lot of money. So I still but wouldn't. Is it worth it? I, I wouldn't do that. See, I, I wouldn't do that under any circumstances, regardless of the person between me and Cause if I take that money, obviously that money could do some good. <laughs> that's that's I could cop some houses. I could invest. I could buy businesses. I could do a lot with that money. But that guilt go either way at you. It's gonna. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't do something like that. Not only for the guilt, but also that's wrong. For the guilt and because it's it's the wrong. But the guilt did eat away at um, Judas because he ended up killing himself uh, after he turned Jesus in. Right, right, at that point. I'm just thinking about now, right? Maybe he's like, like what you're saying, he's probably like, yeah, I could cop some house. I could buy me some new sandals, right? He's probably thinking about all he could do with 
money, mm-hmm. right? But still, I believe even in that point, he's questioning. Should I really do this? Should I still go through this? Because he knows already, you know? Um, uh, where it says that, uh, it says, the one who eats my food will turn against me. Um, I think I've heard that before. When we eat my food, that will turn against me. I don't think I've heard that before. I was kind of surprised by it. I don't think. I don't think. I'm not even sure if I've heard that before. Mm-hmm. So what, what does he mean by that? The one who eats my food will turn against me. Has turned me. against me. Um, well, remember in the beginning, right? They said it, it was time for supper. Right. So they were about to have that last meal together. He's alluding to Judas, he's about to eat his food in the same time against him. Maybe he's referring to that in the beginning. He said, time has come for them to have um, supper. And the devil had already prompted Jesus, Judas. So he's speaking about Judas and him about, about to betray him. That, that, makes, that makes sense now, because I'm like, ain't all of them going to eat the food? So, you just throw a little subs out there. Like, I, I, I know, I know what's gonna happen. No, don't, don't, don't think like I ain't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank God, thank, thank, thank God, Son of His Son. Thank Jesus for going through the process because we are able to have life because of this. Hmm. Absolutely. We live because He died. That's right. That's right. And and that that's that's where it ends um, for today. Verse twenty. Right. That even though the only person that will be surprised is are the, the fellow disciples. Jesus already knew. Yeah. <laughs> Essentially, Jesus already knew. He knew what's going on. He know what's up. He's committed to his purpose. I think, you know, aside from the, the context of what we, we talked about in terms of um, the feet washing and him being aware of the betrayal, I think this, again, just want to uh, reiterate how much this, how much Jesus modeled servant leadership. Right. And there are so many different forms of leadership, right? It's transformative leadership, there's servant leadership, there's transformational leadership, so many different forms of leadership. But the one that I love the most is servant leadership, right? Putting your people first, uh, serving and meeting their needs, right? Making a difference in their lives. And Jesus is the perfect and ultimate model of servanthood. Right? That we, even that in position, even as we, are elevated, right? Even as Ezra, you become youth pastor, minister, all these great positions that we are to remain humble, right? Um, Don't start smelling ourselves too much. Don't think we're so high and mighty that we can't come down and do even the lowest task, right? In all that you're doing, I know we said this to you before, right? But remain Mm -hmm. humble. That was one of the key takeaways for me from this text, just being humble, no matter how much you're elevated. And I listened to it. I'm going to continue to keep that in my mind. This part may include in the video. My takeaway from um, today just really showed to me how, how this wonderful um, Jesus is, regardless of what was going to happen, he just continued to say, you have to be in order to be a leader, you have to be a, a, a server. You have to serve. You cannot be a leader and not serve. And that's my biggest takeaway. Jesus not only led, and he was a perfect example of a leader. Uh, he showed leadership qualities that I don't think at that time probably was shown before. And he also served. He, he served. He washed his um, disciples' feet. That that's, Absolutely. I take a different level of um, I don't know what you call it, but that, that's a different level of person right there to go down, wash people's feet, and serve you. So, 
my main takeaway is in order to be a leader, you have to be a servant. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the model to follow, right? And and I, just, just to add to what you said, um, to be a servant leader, and to continue serving in the face of opposition and advers- adversities, right? Um, that, that's, that's the, because you can serve when everything is fine, right? But what do you do when people oppose you, right? When people are against you, when people don't like you, when people don't like what you're doing, your ideas, what, what do you do? Do you give up? Do you quit? Do you walk away? Or do you continue to serve, right? Even if it's three people, if everyone else has left, we will continue to serve those three. And I think that's that's the key uh, in the face of opposition and adversities. Right? Do you continue to serve? Do you continue to serve? Amen. <laughs> that's that's our, our study for today. Pick back up next week with verse twenty-one, probably to the end. Through thirty through thirty-eight, which. Yeah. Was, 17, 18, very fair. You do a closing prayer and then I'll do the outro where we'll part ways like how the, the Red Sea was parted. Holy Father, we bless you, we honor you. Oh God, we thank you so much. You are indeed a great God and there is none like you. We thank you for this time. We thank you for uh, speaking with us and being with us. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will help us to model your form of leadership, servanthood. We are to be servants. We're not to be expected to be served, but to serve. And so, Father, help us to remain humble no matter how much you elevate us, no matter what positions we're in. Help us to never think of ourselves so high and mighty that we can't come down and serve your people. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will help us to continue to grow, continue to learn, and as your son prayed earlier, that iron will continue to sharpen iron. We thank you, O oh God, for this time. We pray, O oh God, that uh, we'll continue and have a desire to study and seek you in your word. We pray that you'll continue to provide us with understanding and revelation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for coming back each and every single week. If you haven't already liked the video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will notify you. This is the end of the video. This is Motivation Real Christians. I'm out. Peace.